Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck, and I'm very pleased to be doing this show today. We're gonna to be talking about the wines from Chablis. And I'm not talking about the four, six, eight, 15 gallon jug that you can buy 49 cents at your local 7-Eleven. I'm talking about the real Chablis, and it's really funny. The impact of the Carlo Rossi's and the Almadines and the Inglenooks, Chablis, big buckets of wine, have really created a really interesting opportunity. Unfortunately, I'm starting to see it go away, but for a few years there, a good decade, you know, leading up in the last 10 years or so, you could really see these wines being very undervalued because the brand perception in the US market was definitely hurting the sales of these products. So I believe that Chablis is probably the best valued white burgundies in the market today because you get world class quality and you're still paying prices that I think are extremely affordable for what is in the bottle. So we've got four very different interesting Chablis, all, uh, all new wines to me, I have not had any of them and I'm very excited we're gonna do that in a minute. Let's do a little house cleaning. I got a very big announcement. And Chris, we're gonna have to probably post this over here, just the actual announcement, just so people see it. I am announcing the San Francisco party date. So I'm gonna need somebody to reach out and help me organize the location and, uh, and be the person that I can forward the emails to to all the people that are participating. And or, if I was smart, and now I've just gotten smart here on the spot, Chris is gonna start a thread for me, San Francisco party, for everybody to go in there and basically say if they're coming in. So I'm gonna have a link right over here if you wanna get involved on the San Francisco party. We're going to be doing it on May 31st. So I will be in San Francisco on May 31st I'm gonna have some wine flown out. Hopefully you can bring a bottle or two as well. And we're gonna do one huge party. I have no idea how many people we're gonna see. So we'll decide on the venue. Um, anybody wanna host it if they have a big house in San Francisco or a place or somebody they know or own some sort of establishment, let me know. But the San Fran party is confirmed. I'm on the cusp of confirming the Chicago party. Hopefully I can give you that date tomorrow. So San Fran, you are confirmed. Get off my back, 49er fans. All right. What else is going on? Um, I know. Now nah, let's save that for later. Okay, so let's start with wine number one. This is the Jean-Marc Bocard. Now Bocard is a tremendous producer. 2005 Petit Chablis, which is 12 US dollars and it's rated 86 points by Alan Meadows, who's really the Burghound as he's known, who's really established himself as one of the great critics of Burgundy in the US. and. Uh, and he's, uh, he's fantastic. I mean, he's, uh, he's done a real good job, and uh, I like him a lot. He's very tough critic, so 86 points is actually pretty darn good for a $12, um, $12 Chablis. You're getting some nice color, some fun facts about Chablis. It's 110 miles south of Paris, 32 million bottles produced of Chablis each year. There's four classifications of Chablis. Petit Chablis, which is the entry level, then Standard Chablis, then Premier Cru Chablis, and then Grand Cru Chablis. So I'm not even sure what we have. What do we have here? We have a Premier Cru, a Premier Cru, and a Premier Cru. Really, really uh, diversifying, aren't we here? Anyway, so those are the four classifications. So we have one entry level, and we have three from the third tier, right underneath the big tier, but really this is a, an unbelievable tier. Anything Premier Cru is unbelievable quality Chablis. Um, what else do we want to talk about with Chablis? 32 million bottles, that's about it. I mean, really probably the most interesting aspect that a lot of people don't realize, and here's another little fun fact, and should we throw a cork for this? Yeah, not bad. Um, these wines are 100% Chardonnay. So uh, a lot of people don't realize that. Sometimes we say to people, you know, they're asking for a nice $20 bottle of Chardonnay, and we're like, oh, you should try this nice Chablis, and they look at us like this. You know, that brown, But you know, we know what we're talking about and a lot of times people don't realize. So Chablis is 100% Chard. Let's get into these wines. Nice subtle honeydew flavor on the nose. I'm getting a lot of cantaloupe on the nose in this wine and little hints of real honey, like, you know, honeycomb. Twelve and a half percent alcohol, real good acidity, nice balanced wine, lots of fresh pear, baby pear flavors coming through in this wine. A um, little off balance, a little austere. Reminds me a little bit of like some sour lemon gone awry in this wine. It was real close to doing a good job, but not really my cup of tea. Um, I don't know, not really as full bodied as I'd hoped. A little bit more, you know, medium bodied. 
which is fine, which is a characteristic. It's got the minerality that a lot of great Chablis have, which is fun, a little blue stone, a little salmon river action, you know, just like that whole ocean front, you know, fly fishing, the smells you get around that. Um, but all in all, I'm not as impressive of wine as I was kind of hoping for. I'm gonna go 85 points on this wine, um, which in theory, Allen's 86 might be my 88. So 85 points, I'm a little disappointed with this wine. For 12 bucks, you know, it's not bad, you're not gonna be upset, but it's definitely not as good as I kind of hoped it would be, considering that a lot of people swear by it here at the shop. So, I think we upset some people, or what are you gonna do? Um, what we have here is the Jean-Pierre Grosset Chablis Premier Cru La Fourneau, which is a great vineyard. 30 US dollars, 90 points, wine spectator. Chablis falls in the north part of the Burgundy region, and again, just has an enormous tradition that a lot of people don't realize, and going back to what happened in the US in the 70s and 80s, really curtailed the progress of Chablis in the US market, and that's been our treat. I mean, let's take advantage of it. We get ripped off by brands so many other places. Chablis is actually a place of quality where the brand has been mismanaged because of the rules and the World Wine Council allowed these wineries in California to brand things as Chablis in these huge jugs. So I'm screaming to you, I'm begging you, don't force me to bring out the knife, go out and try Chablis because I'm telling you, unfortunately, Everybody's getting a little more educated. I guess I'm kind of contributing to that right now, so I apologize to all the Chablis heads because I'm gonna get at least five emails from you guys upset with me for exposing it. But um, it's time to be exposed, and I think we still got about 24 months. So you can run out, and this is $30, and I'll tell you, most of the $30, which is an expensive bottle of wine, however, I have had many Chablis in the $30 price range that have been up to snuff with 50, 60, 70, 80 dollar versions of Polini, Montrachet, Merceau, and other things of that nature. So there is some value in it. And now we're getting cozy, here we go. All right, this is a tremendous nose. This actually reminds me of melted butter over almonds, which is quite nice. And if you've never done that, then you know, you're missing out on an explosion of Epicurean sensation. Yeah, very, very subtle, uh, flavor of mint, believe it or not, coming through in the nose as well, which is very awkward and not something that I've ever picked up on a white wine from this area before, but it's kind of coming through a little bit, which is really intriguing. I'm also getting a very interesting walnut flavor and a little bit of apricots and peaches. It's a very aromatic wine. The flavors are very subtle. I would say that most people are gonna pick up definitely the almonds and the melted butter on top of it. Like drinking clouds. I've said this before to some of my friends and they like it, they told me to use it in the show. It's like drinking clouds. If you imagine yourself drinking cloud, it's so smooth, it's so easy, it's so fluffy, it's so wonderful. This is maybe one of the most silky expressions of Chardonnay I've ever come across. It is pure velvet, rose petal flavors coming through on the mid palate. Very, very, very intriguing, you know, blue stone, um, very, you know, rocky, mineral aspects to this wine, almost like crushed she seashells mixed in with blue stones and a couple of rocks. Very, very much, very lively. Um, this is a good bottle of wine. Wow, the structure on the mid palate is blowing me away. Impressive. Hints of lemon peel on the finish, great bottle of wine. I'm gonna go higher than the wine spectator. I'm gonna go 92 points on this wine. This is an exceptional Chardonnay. 30 bones, you know, doesn't mean that you gotta go scream out and buy 40 cases of this wine. But if you're able to seek this out, Grosset has some good distribution on the East Coast especially. Uh, please do. This is a beautiful, beautiful bottle of Chardonnay. Kudos, and this is what Chablis is all about. And I'll be very honest with you, if you poured me this and said it was a 50, 60 dollar Merceau, I wouldn't be appalled by the effort. Let's move on, and this guy is huge. This is one of my favorite producers. This is Jean-Paul Ambonois Druin, Drone, and this is a uh, 2005 Chablis Premier Cru, the Mont de Tonnerre, and this is 91 points Tanzer, and this is 29 US dollars, and 2005 is an exceptional vintage in Burgundy, like exceptional. 
You know, obviously you've heard about the Bordeaux hype. I talk about it all the time because I'm so excited about the 2005 Bordeaux. But the 2005 Burgundies, especially some of the whites, could really steal the show for value. This is an 05 Premier Cru single vineyard Chablis that's 29 US dollars. And I got to tell you, for all you wine nerds, you understand this is the equivalent of a Premier $80, $90 Colt California Cabernet. And I, I think for $29, it's a joke. Now, the wine may stink. I haven't had it yet. But the pedigree of this producer tells me that it's probably going to be pretty darn solid. Let's see. And right off the bat, you can see a nice golden color, a little bit darker than the last two wines that we've done from this area. So I, I appreciate the color co concentration. Very golden as you swirl. I mean, I'm having a lot of fun just with that. Um, lots of oak but subtle oak coming through on this nose, pears and apples. I mean, just almost like taking an oak tree and like cutting up pears and apples in half and just smearing them against the oak tree. That's the symmetry of the nose of this wine. It's good. The nose is spectacular, actually. Very smoky. Um, smells heavy. I like to use that, and it does. Smelled heavier than it was on the body. Wow, this is a throwback with some oak monster. And it's really cool. It's just like, it's a little, you know? It's a, such a throwback, Chablis. It makes me think of some of the great Ravino Chablis that I've ever had, who's a great, great producer. Even Duvisat. It reminds me of a classic Chablis. Um, but there's just a tinge of finishing with that real new world oak, which is, you know, fine. And very smoky and very good. Very deliberate connection in your palate when you're tasting this wine. It's very obvious, the flavor profiles on this wine, more than anything else. And we're talking about lemon peel, pears, apples, and again, once again, the classic characteristic of minerality that these wines offer that many wines don't, that kind of brings some sort of uh, balance to the wines that some Chardonnays get too over the top. There's a humbleness, there's a uh, lack of ego in these wines, and, and I appreciate that about Chablis. And, and a lack of ego, in the way these wines are priced, and I think you should appreciate that, we sure do. This is a very well-structured, little hints of vanilla, even a little, little bit of like a fig flavor coming through that kind of really pops as I'm tasting it still on the finish. I like this wine a lot. I'm gonna agree with Steven Tanzer on this wine and go 91 points on this wine. Um, I think the Grosse had a little bit more going for it. It was just a little bit more interesting on the mouthfeel. This is an exceptional example of Chablis as well though, and should definitely be seeked out. Drone is one of the great producers in the world, let alone in Chablis. I like this wine quite a bit, 91 points. I mean, just thinking about having this now with, you know, a Mahi Mahi or, you know, a grouper, which I've been eating a lot of lately. And that's that. So, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit right now. I'm gonna ask you the question of the day. Question of the day. How many bottles of Big Jug Chablis have you drank in your life? And don't lie, there's no reason to lie. And more importantly, before we get into the last wine, I'm gonna make your day. And Chris, I think here we're gonna lose a lot of viewers. So whoever stays and watches the fourth wine, I appreciate it, I'll just try to make it really cool, but I think all of you are about to leave. Today is a big day in the NFL. And you know I like the NFL. As a man, matter of fact, many people email me and say this is a football show, not a wine show. Well, today is the first day of free agency in, in the NFL, and I've been planning a long time for this date, based on that, to give you a little bit of a free agency. So, Chris, and put it on the board here right now so they can really see how it's spelled so we don't have complaints. Use the code free agency at Wine Library, expiring midnight Eastern Standard Time. So, Cali heads, pay attention, that's 9 p.m. for you. Midnight Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. So I'm giving you all day to mix it up, Free shipping on any order you want. Admit it, you like me. Yay! You should see the dance, it's pretty good. Anyway, I hope you enjoy that, I hope you seek out, use it on some things you've been compiling, good luck, enjoy, 
And now let's move on. So me, Chris, and the four people that are left over, I hope you enjoy this because this is a great wine, usually. Again, a great producer. This is the Verger, Chablis Premier Cru, Vallons, but it's Via Vines, Old Vines, De Minot, which is a small, single vineyard. This is 90 points, Stephen Tanzer, 32 US dollars, and Verger is really one of the wild cards in the region. He is just, they're just making outrageous wines. Um, very, very sought after wines. People are big fans of this winery. I'm a big fan of this winery. Um, I think they do a great job. 13% alcohol. I mean, look at this color. Also very golden. You know, like the golden locks, the dusty roads, the American dream. Woo! Would come into the ring with. And I'm just seeing that. And that's getting me excited because why not? Whenever you can compare a beautiful $32 bottle of white burgundy to a WCW wrestler's hair, the winery never, never fails to hate that. So anyway, let's give this a little bit of a whirl. Very powerful nose. Definitely the most powerful uh, bouquet of the uh, four wines that we're tasting today. Um, coming very heavy at me, getting very, very heavy gobs of honey. I mean, just gobs, like you go in there with the bee thing. I mean, I'm scared of that. I don't wanna get stung, but you just get in there and you get just dripping out of your hands. Pineapple, which we haven't seen on any of these wines yet, coming through very obvious in this. And staying in a tropical theme, I'm also getting a very lively mango flavor, one of my favorite fruits. A little bit of nutmeg coming through as well. And believe it or not, I almost get a sensation of eggnog, which is very intriguing, interesting, and different. And I like it. God, and it's obvious. You should definitely seek this out if you want a different experience and look for eggnog in the nose. It's really sick. Wow. This wine's taking us for a different ride. I'm getting very lively sugar-coated celery sticks on the inside of my mid palate. And if you can imagine that combination, it's quite awkward and interesting. I like it. Really heavy acidity. I'm still feeling this is a baby of the bunch by far. This is a kind of white wine I easily can see that standing out for at least eight to 10 more years in your cellar. I'm enjoying this wine quite a bit. I like the structure. I like the burnt bark of a tree flavor that I'm getting in my mid transition flavor to the finish. Uh, it's got great structure. Once again, a wine that will do extremely well with any kind of dinner. Great full body. I mean, this is a full bodied wine. You know, you like that. And you know, I mean, this is really nice wine. I'm gonna score nine, this wine 91 points as well. Um, I think it's a point higher than Tanzer thought. But again, as you can see, these are pretty consistent wines. I mean, this was a good tasting. I mean, we had three spectacular wines, in my opinion. Wines that I think are, are exceptional. Again, Pushing that $30 price range so it's not like something you gotta go scream out and you know take out the fire hose and shoot everybody out so you can get the last six bottles, but it's definitely something worth seeking out. A tremendous, 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 tremendous substitute for all those people that are drinking Ferrari Carano and Farniente and Chalk Hill and Stag's Leap and Cake Bread and you know all these $30 California Chardonnays, which are very nice wines, don't get me wrong, but are so in the same style. These wines are more food friendly, more structured, and more complete in many different ways. Now, they don't give you the gobs of excitement, so it's like, you know, it's like a nice evening out with your loved one in compared to going to, you know, those whole things where they do the kingdom and you're eating with 30 people and you throw the spikes and like Knights of Columbus or, you know, all that stuff. So it's a very different mindset to what the California wines do. But you know, sometimes it's fun to go out to dinner with the person you love. And I love these wines. And I, I think Chablis is something that you need to seek out they are very interesting wines. We didn't have any regular Chablis that weren't Premier Cru, but these wines can be found between $15 and $18 in the marketplace and bring a lot more value, in my opinion, than most Chardonnays from around the world in that price range. This is a category I'm excited about, as you can tell, but not as excited as you are about free agency code that's gonna give you free shipping on any order. So we're throwing you that bone. I hope you enjoy it. I hope the Jets sign a couple huge players. Give me a couple predictions of some Jets players, and more importantly, and this is where people ran off and might get stung. This is where Gary gets a little tricky. Your free shipping code will not be valid without a comment in today's episode. Not bad, huh? That's right. We're gonna charge you the shipping after the website didn't charge you the shipping. We're bad. Because you, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world, aren't we?